it's time to look at lesson seven. Why doesn't the energy that goes in to break bonds and that energy that comes out when bonds are formed just balance out? Okay, so you should have picked up your notes, glue them into your notebook, and let's just see. How are you feeling on this Rowlett scale? All right, what did we do in the last class? Well, we used a simulation and we investigated how particles slow down as bonds are broken and move faster as bonds are made. As bonds are formed. Okay, you can see that in this graph right here. As bonds are formed, the kinetic energy of the system increases. Atoms speed up because the attractive force pulls the atom. Higher kinetic energy means a higher temperature. And so this seems to be exothermic because that kinetic energy is rising. As bonds are broken, and we can see in this visual right here, the kinetic energy of the system decreases. Atoms slow down because they are still being pulled by the other atom that they just broke away from. Lower kinetic energy means lower temperature. So this seems to be endothermic. So what do we still want to know? Why doesn't the energy coming in to break the bond just balance out with the energy coming out when bonds form? We kind of thought energy had to be conserved, right? Seems a little bit weird. With stronger bonds, we saw bigger changes in kinetic energy. Particles slow down more when stronger bonds break. Particles speed up more when stronger bonds form. So when are bonds stronger or weaker? Maybe this could help explain why some reactions have a bigger change in temperature or kinetic energy. Remember, we watched the video of barium hydroxide and ammonium chloride, and that temperature dropped a lot. And then we did a reaction with citric acid and baking soda, and the temperature dropped, but not as much. So in reactions, bonds, though, are breaking and forming. So we looked before in isolation. Here's an example of a bond breaking. Here's an example of a bond forming. But in reality, both are occurring. Bonds are breaking and bonds are forming. So what could we do? Well, we could turn on the magnetic fields on both marbles 1 and 2. So we could try to break the bond between 1 and B and form a bond between 2 and B. Now it's time to look at your notes. Okay, you can work alone or work with your table partner to add your predictions. How will the total kinetic energy change in each of these three scenarios? So scenario one, magnets one and two are equal strength. What do you think will happen to the total kinetic energy and why? Scenario two, magnet one is weaker. How will the total kinetic energy change? and why? And then scenario three, magnet one is stronger. How will the total kinetic energy change and why? Now that you had your predictions made, it's time to make some observations. So on the next slides, you're gonna view each scenario from the simulation. Record your observations about how the kinetic energy changed. And also you can see right here, how would the temperature of the reaction system change. Okay, let's look at what we have. The strength of magnet one is four, magnet two strength is also four. Right now, B is bonded to one. We're gonna send in particle A at a speed of 1.6. Okay, let's go. The bond is broken, the bond is forming, Okay, here, right here is what I want you to notice. Here was that initial speed of A. Okay, here was the bond being broken, the bond forming, and then look, look at what it is. Interesting. You can see now 
that magnet one has a strength of two, while magnet two has a strength of four. B is currently bonded to one still. I've kept my initial speed of particle A the same. I've started it moving, but pause it here so we can watch what happens. Okay. The bond breaks. Now the bond forms. And look, here is the amount of kinetic energy, right? The speed. And then look what happens as that bond forms. Look at that. Look at that kinetic energy. Huh. Okay, here you can see the strength of magnet one is four. The strength of magnet two is two. B is currently bonded to one. I have set the initial speed of particle A to two, and uh, we'll see maybe why. Okay, there the bond is broken. The bond forms. Okay, here is that point right when that bond formed. Here was the speed before. Hmm, what has happened to kinetic energy here? Okay, you should have recorded your observations of kinetic energy and how you expected that to be visible in temperature changes. So for scenario one, the kinetic energy remained the same. So we don't really expect a change in temperature. For scenario two, the kinetic energy increased. So we expect a temperature increase. And for scenario three, the kinetic energy decreased. So we would expect a temperature decrease. Okay, here I want to just look at some of the effects of changing particle speed. So for right now, I've set the strength of both magnets the same. One and B are bonded. Okay, Let's set this coming in at a speed of 0.4. I'm going to click setup and go. So watch A coming in. Notice it is moving very slowly, right? And it is going to collide with B, okay? But what do you notice, okay? All right, let's try and change the speed to 0.8. Click setup and then go. You can see particle A is moving in a little bit faster. It collides with B, but again, what do you notice? All right, let's change it to 1.2, click setup, and then particle A is moving a little faster, collides with B. Okay, let's try 1.6, click setup. Here we go, particle A moving faster. Aha, I'm finally able to break that bond, right? Okay, now what happens if I sped it up more and I went to the two? Okay, so change that. Particle A coming in faster. Oh, that bond broke faster. And then what happens here? All right, so we can see from this model that the speed of the particles matters. If the particles are moving too slowly, bonds don't break. If the particles are moving too quickly, it's hard to form the bonds. So there has to be kind of a, a happy medium. So there has to be enough energy to break a bond. And if particles are moving too quickly past each other, they're simply not going to bond. Okay, here we're only going to change magnet strength. So magnet one is at two. I'm going to leave this one alone. It is currently bonded to B. Magnet two is also at a strength of two. And what I'm going to do is uh, run it each time and then just change the strength of magnet two. Okay, so here we go. Here is when they're both set at a strength of two. There was the collision, the bond breaking. There's the bond forming. Okay. Now let's change the strength to four, okay? And here comes our particle A collision, bond breaks, bond forms, okay? Let's change the strength here to six. Okay, here comes particle A 
bond breaking and bond forming. Okay, let's do one more. Let's change the strength here to eight. Okay, and here comes particle A, breaks the bond, and then there we have the bond form. Okay, so what did you notice? Okay, the amount of that change in kinetic energy got greater and greater as the strength changed. Okay, so our three scenarios. Scenario one, the bond formed is equal in strength to the bond broken. Scenario two, the bond formed was stronger than the bond broken. And for scenario three, the bond broken was stronger than the bond formed. Okay, so let's review the demonstrations we've seen earlier in this storyline. We saw ethanol burning, okay, and there's the equation for it right here, all right? And then we saw a video of barium hydroxide and ammonium chloride, and here's the reaction here, okay? So which scenario do you think best applies to those reactions? So what happened in the, the reaction? why do you think that scenario applies okay so choose a scenario number one two or three then explain your choice why did you pick that one and then down here at the bottom indicate whether your reaction based on your explanation is it axothermic or is it endothermic Okay, so this simulation modeled three different scenarios. In one, the bonds formed were equal in strength to the bonds broken. In the second scenario, the bond formed was stronger than the bonds broken. And then in the third scenario, the bond broken was stronger than the bond formed. So which one do you think applies for ethanol burning? Well, scenario two and why? Well, because the temperature or kinetic energy increased, it got warmer. This happens when the bonds broken are weaker than the bonds formed. Why? Because more energy is released when the bonds are formed. Okay. And what about the reaction with barium hydroxide and ammonium chloride? Okay. Well, first, let's answer this down here. Does this then appear to be axo or endothermic? Axo. All right, so for the next one, that appears to be scenario three. And why? Because the temperature or kinetic energy decreased. So this happens when the bonds broken are stronger than the bonds formed. That means I need more energy in order to break the bonds. So more energy has to go into the system to break the bonds. Okay, so what does that uh, have as a type of reaction? That is endothermic. All right, let's look at this section of your notes. Reactions that result in a decrease in temperature are called endothermic. The reactants have stronger bonds. So most of that energy has to go in to break the bonds, okay? Reactions that result in an increase in temperature are called exothermic. The reactants have weaker bonds. So most of that energy is released as new bonds form. Bond energy is the energy that's required to break a bond. And as we modeled with the kinetic energy, like changing the speed of the particle, sometimes when we moved particle A toward it, particle A wasn't moving fast enough to break the bond. So collisions require a certain amount of energy. This is called activation energy. So what have we learned today? So let's look at it in diagram format on the next slides, but let's go over it in words here. So endothermic reactions get colder. The bonds broken are stronger. A lot of energy has to go in to break strong bonds. Exothermic reactions get warmer. The bonds formed are stronger, so lots of energy gets released as strong bonds are formed. Breaking bonds is endothermic. Forming bonds is exothermic. All right, so here is one visual. So you can see in any reaction, we need some energy put in to break the bonds. And then some energy is going to be released when bonds form. 
when forming the bonds releases more energy, it's exothermic. Versus when breaking the bonds requires more energy, it's endothermic, okay? Now, what would we still like to know? Well, could all of this lead us to maybe explaining why hydrogen fuel releases more energy? Well, here's what I want you to think about. Why are some bonds stronger? Is there a way you think we could determine which bonds are stronger? What do you think?